Minecraft worlds can get rather large, particularly if you're playing on them with friends or on a server or a realm and they're quite active and there's a lot going on. Players tend to explore a lot, go to the far reaches to get shulker boxes, allays and all that sort of good stuff and this ends up leading to world file sizes which are too large to maintain, slow to download and affect the performance of the actual game playing itself. Not to mention the new bug that allows entities to continue being in the game even though they're no longer in the game. That's right, there is a bug, MCP155283, and it means that entities don't always get deleted from the game's database. Even if an entity dies or despawns, or perhaps it's just an item that's gone into a hopper or some lava, the actual information for those entities is staying in the game's database, inflating the size of the world. And this world, which is truly Bedrock Season 4, which is an SMP for Minecraft Bedrock Edition, has those exact problems. And this world download was taken just before we updated to Minecraft 1.19, and it shows all signs of those problems. Jumping back to the play menu, you can see this world has a file size of 1.6 gigabytes, and considering it's only a few months old, that's quite large. But with players exploring to the far reaches of the world for all of the goodness, and obviously this bug, that world file size soon gets inflated. So what can we do about it? Well, I just happen to have a tool for that. Now, I've had a Minecraft Bedrock Edition prune tool for quite some time, and recently I've been developing it to make it faster and more reliable, and this latest version gives it a facelift as well. It now has a GUI, which means you have buttons to press rather than command line stuff to write in. Clicking on Choose World will pop up a list of the worlds in your Minecraft. And as you can see, we've got two here. We've got the Truly Bedrock Season 4 World download, and we've got another one, which is my Creative Test World. Now we can click either of those and go into it, or if you wanted to load up a world that's not part of your Minecraft worlds, you can click on the browse button and then you can browse your PC to find a different world folder. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use the choose world feature. I'm going to choose the Truly Bedrock Season 4 world download. And as you can see, it pops up a little window with a lot of options in it. And the options are relatively simple. You've got the overworld dimension, the nether dimension and the end dimension. Each one of those you can choose to include in the prune or the trim and you can set the coordinates for the safe area. This is the coordinates of the area it's going to keep in blocks. Now you'll see there's a lot of writing to the side and that's because the block coordinates don't always line up to chunks and it calculates what those chunk sizes will be. So for instance, in here I could put in that I wanna go from minus 3000 to 3000 and it's gonna show me that that's actually the block coordinates of 2992 that it will prune because it has to do it by chunk. When you make changes to these settings, it will save that for the next time you run this. So whatever you put in here this time is going to show the next time you load it. And there's another button down here as well, which is optimize after trim, which does take a long time, but it actually significantly reduces the size of the database after you've pruned it by reorganizing the data inside of it. So I'm going to turn that one on. I'm going to set these as my coordinates that I want to prune. So the overworld is going to go from minus 4,000 to 4,000 on the X and Z axis. The nether is going to go from minus 2,000 to 2,000 on the X and Z axis. And the end is going to go from minus 1,000 to 1,000 on the X and Z axis. And all I'm going to do is click Trim World. Now, first thing it's going to do is going to say, do I want to make a backup before starting? And of course I do. So I'm going to click Yes. And that's going to place another backup into the world folder called Backup 1. Now what it's going to do is go through a process of deciding what it needs to actually get rid of and what it needs to keep, which, depending on your world size, can take a long time. The first thing it has to do is actually work out how much information there is, and that takes a few seconds. And as you can see, this world has nearly 8 million keys to process. Each key is something like a piece of chunk information or an entity. And the entities on this particular world take up a lot of space. Once it's finished calculating the database size, it will then scan through the database, each one of those keys working out what it is and whether it needs to keep it or get rid of it. It's also going to find all of those lost entities that shouldn't exist anymore and get rid of those during the process. The first two stages are relatively slow, but the next ones are relatively quick. It will then scan through all the entity data, then delete all of the data, and then that's it. It's done. And now comes for the really long process, which is optimizing the world. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to get feedback from that process in order to give you a percentage of how much is done. So there's a few dots that go past on the screen so you know it's doing something. But unfortunately, at this point, you're just going to have to wait. 
If you exit the tool at this point while it's working, it may corrupt your database, so just leave it running. Even if it takes a long time, depending on the speed of your PC and the size of your world, just let it finish and then you will be good to go. While we're looking at this, you can see here that there were over 3 million entities in the world that shouldn't have been there. 3 million is a large number of entities that shouldn't have been there. And considering the world database was only 8 million keys, the fact that nearly half of those were just entities that shouldn't have existed just goes to prove you how bad that bug is. And then once it's finished, it will pop up to say that you can safely exit the app and it has saved itself a little log file to the directory it's stored in as well so that you can see all of this data in the future you can see that took 4.9 minutes to complete which is a relatively long time however we can do it more quickly without using the optimize function before we do that again though let's just load up minecraft again and check what we've got going on here you can see we've got our world there which is now just one gigabyte rather than 1.6 gigabytes and the old version has been safely stored in a backup here and coming back into this world you can see that nothing has gone missing but i can safely say that the world borders will have been proved but how can i prove that to you well, I'm going to use my test world. My test world has been around for a very long time. I started building it when I first started playing a Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and I put an incredible amount of time into making this chunk grid on the floor because I didn't know how to use commands in order to test things like mob spawning and things like that. And it just happens that that gives us a perfect way to see exactly what's going on when we prune something. So let's prune it. Going back into the prune tool and choosing choose world, I'm going to go to Fox's playground and I'm going to set it to only trim the overworld. I'm not bothered about optimizing this one because, well, it's a tiny world anyway. And I want to prune it to 128 by 128 because that'll give us a good idea of exactly what's happening. And that means it's going to go from minus eight by minus eight chunks to plus eight by plus eight chunks. And then all I'm going to do is click trim world. Of course, I want to make a backup. And then that was it. It's done. That's how quick it will do a very small world. Now popping back into Minecraft and going back into my playground. When we look around, you can see there is quite the significant change. None of the blocks outside of this 128 block area exist anymore. Everything else is gone, but everything within that area is perfectly safe. So what about speeding things up for our large world downloads? Well, let's try do the Truly Bedrock Season 4 world again, but this time without optimizing it. Oh, and by the way, if you just want to optimize a world, then you can do that. You can turn off all of the trims and just turn the optimize on and it will just optimize the world in case you didn't want to actually prune anything. So I'm going to put all of the coordinates back in how I like them, turn the trims all on, click on go. This time I'm not going to make a backup because I'm already working from the backup I made before. And it's managed to find the same nearly 8 million keys to process. It's scanning through the database now, deciding what's good and what's not. And there we go. It's completely done. And this time, it only took 1.6 minutes instead of over 3 minutes. So I would say that's a significant improvement. So I'm going to close that, open up Minecraft again, and we should see something interesting. Notice that the backup size has gone from 1.6 gigabytes to 2.1 gigabytes. And you think, well, how's it got bigger after you've just got rid of half the world's information? Well, that's why the optimize function is really important, because all we've done is deleted data, but not got rid of the empty space. And by doing that, it actually manages to inflate the size of the database. But don't worry, because once you go into the world and start playing it, that will soon shrink down. But it's not going to shrink down as far as if you actually take the time to optimize the world. 100 years later. I'm, I'm promise I'm done, mate. I'm just, uh, just thinking about loading up the actual world for you and all that. And there we go. Everything is there as we expected it to be, although maybe a little bit more laggy because we didn't bother to optimize the database. But that's fine because Minecraft's going to do that in the background for us anyway over time. And just nipping straight back out of that back to the world screen, we should already see a significant drop in world size. And there we go. It's already down to 1.5 gigabytes. And that's just loading it up, flying around for a second. It's managed to get rid of 500 megabytes, which is ridiculous. Just like my website, which is where you can go to get these tools. So if you're on my website and you want that tool, the quickest way to do it is actually go to Minecraft versions because it's listed directly on here as the Minecraft World Trimmer Prune Tool. Or you can go to the downloads page and to tools and software 
Scroll down there until you get to the prune tool. It does say it's in alpha stage. This is the first time I've worked on a GUI, so I expect there to be a few bugs. However, it should prune everything fine. Click on the download. Click on the download link. Find somewhere to save it. Open up the zip file. Drag all of the stuff out to a folder wherever you want it, and you're good to go. That's it. You don't have to worry about installing anything or anything like that. All you got to do is click go. But it was illegal. That's not illegal, mate. It's fine. Oh, jeez. It's definitely a good idea to extract the files from the zip file before you try and run it.